Good morning. Just a couple of months ago, the mysterious character V was officially revealed as a tease at Dante's TGS trailer. But now we finally get to see him fully in action on how he plays and what makes him so special and especially different from Nero and Dante's playstyle. Hey, what's up, good people? It's Yellow Motion here, and welcome to a new Devil May Cry 5 video. As in this one, I'm going to talk and cover everything we've seen that's been shown to us for Dante, Nero, and especially V. As I'm going to give you guys a complete and detailed breakdown on how V plays and how it all works for him, as I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it and share you my thoughts on it as well. And to be kept up to date with more DMC5 content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And also guys, while you're at it, I've created a new Instagram page, so make sure to follow me there if you want to. So without further ado, let's Let's get right into it. So first off, let's start with some new images as we got brand new CG portrait renders for V, Dante, Lady and Trish. And as you can see, they all look great and very realistic, as I have to say so. Making them complete with what we've already seen with Nero and Nico, as this is close as you can get as far as realism for these characters. And they all look stunning. The trailer starts with a shot inside of the demon tree, as we see some explosions happening in the background. Then we see Lady flying into the screen, the same happening with Trish and the Sparta Sword as well. And we can see that the demon king Urizen is sitting on his throne there, as we are officially hearing him talk for the first time. It has begun. I will show you your worst nightmares. We also see Dante in his Devil Trigger form, trying to fight against the Demon King, but he's just too powerful and punches Dante back with his big fist. And with that, Dante's Rebellion Sword gets broken into pieces. Yes, that's right, Dante's Rebellion gets destroyed. We also get to see a better close up of Horizon's face, and the first thing that I immediately noticed was that he has another eye on his right side of his face, as initially I thought he would have three eyes, but now it seems that he has four in total, but if you look closely you'll see that he has green eyes. We also see a bit of his mouth as well, but don't get the full picture as most of his face is still covered. Let's move on to V. The character we've all been waiting to see, as V brings an entirely new playstyle to Devil May Cry 5 compared to Nero and Dante, as he's using a book and a cane as his weapons. And although we saw his book a bit in the previous trailer as a tease, we don't see how he uses it in this one. But nonetheless, there's quite a lot showcased here, so let's get to it. At first, it seems that V is very limited in comparison to Dante and Nero in his movesets and arsenals, as V's combat is pretty much non-existent and lacks the power to fight himself. But that's where V's three unique demons come in that fight for him. First one, the Thunderbird Griffin. Second, the Swift Panther Shadow, and the third, the big massive Colossus Demon Nightmare. So he's relying on his three demon familiars to do the dirty work and deal damage in battle for him to the enemies. And only once there is enough damage dealt by these demons, it's up to V to put the enemies to rest by killing them with his cane. As we can see him doing that many times, where he throws his cane to the demons and warp strikes to them to deliver the final blow. And he also can do that from a distance, as seen here. And the best part is that each demon can be controlled independently by the player, which makes it possible to attack simultaneously with the various demons. So you can even attack while V himself is being attacked and damaged by the enemies. As this switching playstyle isn't shown in the trailer, but I assume that you move freely with V, and by pressing either one of the action buttons, it corresponds to either Griffin or Shadow doing the attacks. And maybe then with the shoulder buttons, you can switch individually to either Griffin or Shadow by controlling them and doing your own attacks with them, as after all, we don't see any HUD menus or something like that, it's indicating it. So in a nutshell, the way 
V plays is that he observes the battle, as V's demons do the fighting and deal the damage. But it's up to V himself to deliver the final blow and kill the enemies, as the demons won't do that. As just like Griffin says to V at the beginning. So get rid of those demons quick, cause killing them ain't my shit. So you may ask, when exactly is it for V to attack and to deliver the final blow? Well, as V's demons start to attack, we can see that the enemies start to get decolorized and eventually turn into a purple color palette. And once they get decolorized, that's the visual cue for you as the player and for V that he can act and attack and by that deliver the final blow, like here for example. And we also get to see how this works on bosses, as when they're decolorized and purple, it's time for V to attack. And when he successfully does that, the color resets again, meaning that V has to wait for another opportunity until his demons do more damage. As seen here when he's fighting with Cavalier Angelo, he's completely purple, but as soon as V strikes him, Cavalier resets his color. Also, I think that when V is warping, when Cavalier pierces through him, it could be one of V's special techniques or upgrades down the line. As of course, just like with Nero and Dante, there needs to be something where we need to be able to upgrade him as well, with some additional new moves and techniques, and maybe even gaining new demons besides Griffin, Shadow and Nightmare. So what are V's demons exactly and what can they do? Well, let's take a closer look. Starting with Griffin, as Griffin the Thunderbird seems to be a loyal companion to V and he's mostly on V's side and does the talking with him. And Griffin can be used by V for long ranged attacks. The specialty is using thunder with electrified attacks such as thunderbolts and he can also give V a lift if close by as V pretty much can use him to be in the air and I can imagine that V could reach to places he normally can't by himself. Shadow is the panther used by V for close range combat and it comes in many shapes and forms as Shadow is able to shapeshift into blades, needles and other various abstract sharp looking weapons that can deal some heavy damage to the enemy in close range. And when Shadow is summoned by V, he can also move at a faster speed than normal. Now I personally assume that V has to be on him instead of just being able to move faster, as just like hanging on Griffin enables him to reach places. As it's not like that V can't run by himself, he can of course, but we don't see that much in the trailer. Let's move on to Nightmare. Nightmare is V's most powerful demon. When summoned, Nightmare may crash into the battlefield like a meteorite or burst through parts of the environment. Nightmare moves slow, but its massive strength and invulnerability are its special ability, making him able to deal high damage with his fists and beams of light to destroy hordes of demons and pretty much anything that stands in his way. With his gigantic size, V can use him to destroy enemies with just his basic attacks. And we also see that V can be on top of him to control him individually. And as we can see, V is able to take on Goliath just with Nightmare in a battle of the giants, controlling him individually. But V is also able to use Nightmare to destroy obstacles that are in his path. And I can imagine that this will be used in some way of puzzles as well to navigate your way through a level, where you either have to use Griffin, Shadow or Nightmare to your advantage to proceed forward. And it seems that V is only able to call him when his hair turns white, meaning that somehow he has to use more power or some sort of energy to do that. Like every time I saw Nightmare being there in the gameplay, V had white hair. Now we covered V's playstyle, his demons, but there is one thing left and that's V's tattoos, as in my opinion they are very special and seem to be very important, as I think they are a visual cue in gameplay when V is summoning his demons, as I do think it's related to his powers and how much he's able to use it, especially the strongest of the three being Nightmare, where his hair turns white. And as you can see, when he snaps his fingers, a fair deal of his tattoos immediately start to disappear away from his body, as seen here on his arm. We also we also see that his hair turns white on the fly, but again, only when he's summoning Nightmare. So what I think is that his tattoos are a visual meter, an indicator, as for example how it is with Dante's Devil Trigger. As he somehow needs more power, or in this case more tattoos to be filled up his body for him to be able to do so. And I can imagine that he will be able to do some additional special attacks for Griffin and Shadow that we haven't seen. But also, there are parts in his gameplay where his tattoos are faded away but not fully visible. But there are also parts where his body is completely clean with no tattoos at all, indicating that maybe he can't use them anymore as they need to reappear when he's done fighting after the battle. As seen here, when he's at the back of Nightmare, he has no tattoos at all. But also, when he's doing his warp strike attack with his cane and doing a backflip, 
His body is completely clean, as I do think that his tattoos and him turning into the white haired V are pretty much the devil trigger variant for him, and I wonder what other techniques he may have as well. And lastly, there are also some neat graffiti and posters on the walls, like I want memes, or lady was here, and of course, Sparta Express. So it is written. All right. So look, there is nothing really new for Nero that we haven't seen or know, but it's still a nice showcase of what he's able to do with his various Devil Breakers, such as his Buster Arm, the Overture, Ragtime, Gerbera, Rawhide, and his Tomboy Devil Breaker. After that, we see Nero fighting a new boss battle against the big ass demonized demon chick. And on it, there seems to be a four-headed woman creature or demon as well, controlling the bird demon. And the place itself seems to be a nest slaughter place for the demon bird, as we can see a lot of human skulls and bones coming through the ground as Nero is fighting this big demon bird or demon chick, depending on how you want to call it. Also, each time he has equipped his buster arm, he does some very special grappling moves and actions, as we've already seen that being showcased against Goliath, where he's able to grab and throw him. I've got all the power I need. Right here! Now let's move on to Dante. We see a showcase of Dante's various new weapons that have been revealed. The ones being showcased are the Faust Hat, the Kalina Antu, and King Cerberus. So let's do a quick rundown of them. The Faust Hat is one of Dante's new special weapons in Devil May Cry 5, and it's pretty much a weaponized form of a Faust Demon from Devil May Cry 4. And essentially, the Faust Hat is a Red Orb Collector or Taker, as you use your Red Orbs to use the special attacks of the Faust Hat, and while using your Orbs for the special moves, there's a risk reward with that, as when performing the special moves and being attacked and hit, you're you're gonna lose your invested orbs, but if you successfully perform your move, you will get much more orbs back than you initially had spent to perform it. Made it for lady and she paid for it, so consider it a rental. We also see the Kalina Ann too, and even though Nico says in the trailer that she made it for lady, the developers have said that it's specifically made for Dante, as Lady asked Nico to make a new Kalina Ann for Dante that was gonna match the original one from Lady. So it could mean that story-wise, it was initially made for Lady, but she then gifted it to Dante, or let him keep it. Something new is that you can shoot in the air as well with the Kalina Ann too, making it great for combo starters, something you couldn't do with the original one. From Lady. And the last one we see is King Cerberus, as the Cerberus is a three-part Ninchako Devil Arm, and it's a fan favorite and now it's back in Devil May Cry 5 as King Cerberus. As King Cerberus retains its Ice Nunchuck style, but adds two completely new forms and modes, the first one being a Fire Bow Staff and the second one a Lightning Base Chain form, adding a great variety and mix-ups in its gameplay and its combat. So that makes it three styles in total. And there's also this clip that's really nostalgic and reminiscent when Dante was fighting Cerberus in Devil May Cry 3 by saying more or less the same lines. Easy, Fido. How about I take you for a walk? Come on, puppy. Let's go. Come on, little puppy. I'll take you out for a walk. Come on, little puppy. I'll take you out for a walk. Maybe it's the same Cerberus as seen in DMC3, and now it turned into a king somehow, but whatever it is, we're bound to see a boss fight happen for sure. And lastly, the way the trailer ends is that we are seeing Dante in another new devil trigger form. And I pretty much think that this is his Majin slash perfect devil trigger form, as it has a great resemblance to Dante's Majin devil trigger form from Devil May Cry 2, but design-wise, by the various designs from DMC4's art book. And this one also seems to have the resemblance on how Dante's perfect devil trigger would have looked like in DMC4. So it's a mixture of both Dante's Majin form from DMC2 and its perfect devil trigger design from DMC4's art book. Now with this new devil trigger form, we also see that Dante's sword has evolved as well. Now I'm not saying this is a completely new sword, but I'm also not saying it's rebellion as well, since after all we saw that it was broken in the trailer. But I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be rebellion as well, in its true awakened form maybe. The other possibility is that it's the Sparta Sword that has given Dante new power and has awoken with it to a new form. As in this part of the trailer, it seems that Dante is going all out in the Demon King, as everyone pretty much got their ass kicked and Dante is the last guy standing, as everyone is being locked on by the roots of the tree. So what the hell is happening here exactly? 
But hey, do you know what's also interesting, guys? Did you know that these demons, Griffin, Shadow and Nightmare, are all the names of the enemies and bosses that Dante has faced in the very first Devil May Cry 1, and all of them serving the one ruler and the one and only Demon Emperor? Yes, I'm talking about the one and only Mundus, as they even look like the counterparts from DMC1. So, are they back now? Are they reborn? Or do they just have the names of those past demons? And what do they have to do with V now? And what's up with them helping V? Why are they on his side? And pretty much helping Dante? Well guys, that's something I'm gonna talk about in another theory and analysis video. As with V's trailer, there's quite a lot to take in and connect the dots with everything else we've seen so far. Which will result in a new Devil May Cry 5 theory and analysis video that's gonna be pure story related. So I hope you're looking forward to that one. It's gonna be awesome. And there you have it guys, this was my Devil May Cry 5 video about the brand new trailer showcasing Dante and our main man of the hour, V. I hope you had a good impression on him and all the info you needed to know on how V fights and how he plays like, as it's really a contrast to Dante and Nero for sure, but I really like that, as it's not just yet another typical demon hunter with a sword and a gun. And it's only the beginning as there's quite a lot to talk and speculate about the story of DMC5, but I'll leave that up for another theory and analysis video. So look Look forward to those. But the most important thing to me is, what do you guys think of V's gameplay and the reveal of his army of demons? But also, what did you think of Dante's showcase of his weapons, such as the Kalina Ann 2, King Cerberus and the Faust Hat? Well guys, jump into the comment section below and leave me your thoughts. And while you're at it guys, why don't you like and share this video as it helps me greatly and become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And you can also find me on my social media pages simply at Yellowmotion and now on Instagram as well at Gaming. And that'll do it for me for this one. Once again guys, thanks a lot for being here and thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in the next Devil May Cry 5 talk video. Peace.